staff diagnostic. Let's talk about that one. A full service and integrated diagnostic chain headquartered in East India will launch its IPO on November 29th. The price band for the IPO has been set at 420 to 441 rupees per share. And they're looking to raise about 840 crores via an offer for sale where the promoters will bring down their holding to 50%. Rima caught up with Somna Chatterjee, who is the Joint Managing Director, and Ritu Mittal, who is the Joint Managing Director as well, and CEO of Suraksha Diagnostics, began by asking them about the promoter pledge post-IPO. Listen in. So this is the first opportunity for long-term investors to have some monetization. Mm. They've been invested in the company for 32 years now. And also for our private equity fund, which is or they meant to dilute their stake. Mm. They will still continue to hold 10%. Okay. And Dr. Chatterjee and myself, we had borrowed some money to buy more shares of Suraksha. Mm. So we want to pay off that debt. Mm. That is one of the conditions. In, an, in a liquidity event, Suraksha, we have to pay off the so debt. So the pledge today is what percentage? <laughs> Is around 40%. 40%. And with this, uh, you know, the, the, the fundraise that the promoters are doing, the pledge comes down to zero? Absolutely. Okay. Fantastic. And what about the debt and the cash in the books right now? Because there is no fresh issue. So there's any negligible debt in the book? Single digit? Yes. Okay. And the cash? Cash is around 50 crores. 50 crores. And every year, say in FI24, what is the kind of cash that you've generated? FI24 would be around 45 crores. 45 crores, okay. Now let's talk about the kind of growth rate. Now if I look at it from FI22 to FI24, there is a drop in your revenues, but that's because FI22 had the benefit of COVID. If I strip out the non-COVID revenues for you, have seen a growth of 20, 21% yes. from FI22 to FI24. Is that sustainable, sir? That is highly sustainable, and we believe that going ahead, uh, we will be able to maintain this rate of growth, if not better it, hmm. because there is a growing uh, idea amongst people, if you look at the figures, then the rate of growth in the organized sector of diagnostics is growing very fast. Hmm. One of the principal reasons is post-COVID, hmm. people have become a little more sensitive to branded diagnostics. Hmm. So we believe this is not only sustainable, but this can even increase ahead. Okay, so you're confident about maintaining the 20% kind of revenue growth, if not better it. What about margins? Margins for the company have also expanded. 29% in FI22, scaled up to 33% in FI24, and further to 35% in Q1. What is driving that? It is basically the economies of scale that is driving it. Mm -hmm. So as we are expanding, mm -hmm. our margins are getting better because the fixed costs are just getting divided. Okay. But some, so how much more can you expand your margins from here on? So we think we can go up to 40 to 42 percent EBITDA margins. 40 to 42 percent. Okay, fair enough. Okay. You spoke about market share. I think your market share in East India is 1.15 to 1.3 percent. Who are your large competitors in the region and what is the headroom for growth in terms of a market share? So when we talk about the market share, East India is a pretty huge uh, market and we are present in a very concentrated geography. Mm. If we were to look at our uh, market share in those geographies, it would be much higher than 1.5%. Okay. And we have a huge runway to grow because there is hardly any competition in the geography that so we serve. So in West Bengal, what mm. would be, which is your core market, mm. what would be your market share? I think it would be around 10 to 12 percent. 10 to 12 percent. Incredible. Okay. Yeah. But you also have plans. I was reading your July 16th, the strategy board meeting which took place, has spoken about strengthening position in the core geography of Kolkata and, rest of West, and the rest of West Bengal. And secondly, expand beyond the core market and adjacent geographies of eastern and northeastern India. So today you have 49 diagnostic centers. What would you like to take this number up to? And what are your expansion plans? So we would like to take this number from 49 to around 100 in the next three years. Mm. We would definitely be focusing on West Bengal okay. because there are still some districts which are uncovered. We would like to set up a hub and spoke centers in these districts while catering to the rural population through our channel network. Mm. And we would like to expand to Northeast India first because that is very underpenetrated mm. and underserved. 
So that's the plan that Suraksha has in future. And then we would, of course, expand to places like Bihar, Orissa, and Jharkhand. Okay. If, so you, then, yeah. if you look at it, then you will find that Eastern India has the lowest number of NABL accredited labs. Hmm. It also has the lowest number of NABH accredited hospitals, though it has 28% of the country's population. Hmm. So the headroom for growth in East is enormous. And the paying capacity in diagnostics, if we compare, matches with the premium segment. East and West pays the maximum, South being lowest and North mm. coming after that. And what will be the so, kind of investment you will need for this? So typically the investment every year that we have calculated is around 70 crores. Okay. And it will all come from internal accruals. In expansion, we would also look at acquisitions. Mm. If acquisitions can be made mm. in newer emerging verticals, mm. also acquisitions if they come at a healthy price line, then Shurukha is open to acquire diagnostic centers in the East. Are overall. you evaluating any yes, uh, we options? Are. We are. We are definitely evaluating. Okay. I think the last acquisition was in 2020. So yes. do you think the next one could happen in the next 12 months? I mean, how close are we? We, we are we, very close. Very close. We are very close. Okay. And you don't need funds for this? Your no. internal accruals are... We'll, we'll so take typically care. when you go ahead and acquire, say the last acquisition, what is the kind of money that you spend to acquire a, you know, a center, a branded center or trusted center? So I think we acquired two centers yeah. at a cost of around four crores. Okay. So it's not very... Uh, it's not, uh, yes. You know, one of the challenges, because we have a few listed players now in the markets, and one of the core challenges for diagnostic <coughs> companies has been, you know, the inability to raise prices due to competition from online players. Can you tell us what your experience has been and what is the kind of competition that you face from online players? Well, there was a lot of talk about online players. We haven't actually faced on the ground any competition from them. Neither okay. have we lost our dominant position to any one of them. I read somewhere, and I'm not sure if it's true, but for the industry per se, the average selling price has been stagnant for the last three or four years. Is that true? No, for Suraksha, we raise our prices around 3 to 4 percent every alternate year. Alternate year, okay. Yes. So this year also you've uh, done a price we, hike? We typically do it in December. Okay. So we will be doing it again in December. Suraksha so Diagnostics, they're heading to the primary markets. Time for a short break. Up next, Vinay Rajni of HDFC Securities joins in with some trading strategies and a chart check on the markets. Stay tuned. We'll be right back.